My name is Jay Carey, and with me today is Caleb McNeil. We're both members of the ArcGIS Data Reviewer team here in Redlands, California. In today's presentation, we'll be covering the new automated review capabilities that are included in the Data Reviewer extension for ArcGIS Pro 2.5 and ArcGIS Enterprise 10.8. ArcGIS Data Reviewer automates, simplifies, and improves quality control workflows that enable the delivery of geospatial data you can trust. Using Data Reviewer, you can lower data management costs and reduce risk in decision making by leveraging a unified set of capabilities that support detection, management, and reporting of errors in your data. So automated review is the ability to evaluate a feature's quality using validation methods that assess different aspects of a feature. Very little human interaction is required, so this is the fastest and least expensive form of quality control. Traditionally, this form of data validation is used to assess the quality of features that already exist in your database. This can be useful when establishing a baseline evaluation of a dataset's quality to determine its fitness for use. Automated review can also be used to validate features on creation or modification. This can be useful in data production environments where data is changing through time and you want to prevent the creation of poor quality data. At the Pro 2.5 and Enterprise 10.8 releases, reviewers' data validation checks are an integrated component in attribute rule-based constraint and validation workflows. Data Reviewer facilitates implementation of attribute rules in the following ways. First, Data Reviewer checks are predefined validation methods that address commonly found data quality requirements encountered by customers. Reviewer checks assess different aspects of a feature's quality that can include its integrity, properties such as its attribution, as well as a feature's spatial relationship with other features. They are easy to implement since checks are configurable and there is no need to create custom arcade scripts. And finally, they are supported in both constraint workflows that enhance quality assurance in data production, as well as validation workflows that assess the quality of features that already exist in your database. Reviewer rules are configured data reviewer checks stored in your enterprise geodatabase that assess the quality of features in rows. Reviewer checks that support validation workflows include those that Evaluate a feature's integrity, such as finding extreme angles or contain non-monotonic Z or measure values, as well as a feature's spatial relationship with other features. Also includes checks which assess the geometric characteristics of a feature, such as its length, area, or number of parts, as well as a feature's attribution. In our first demonstration, Kilo will be assuming the role of a technical lead who is responsible for implementing data quality requirements using reviewers' automated checks. He will be implementing a series of quality requirements that are related to hydrographic features such as rivers, aqueducts, ditches, and other weather features. A subset of these requirements are highlighted in the above table, along with the implementing data reviewer check and participating feature classes as well as the relevant quality workflows. Caleb? Thanks, Jay. For this demonstration, I have loaded data from the ESRI data model for national mapping into my ArcGIS Pro session, along with surface elevation imagery. To fulfill the business rules that Jay mentioned, I will be authoring attribute rules on the hydrographic curves feature class. To do this, we can navigate to the attribute rules pane where we can select our configurable rules from the ready to use rules menu. To meet our first requirement, we'll add a cutbacks rule from the ready to use rule menu. This will flag all line features that have an angle of less than 15 degrees. To configure the rule, first we will add a name, a description, 
we'll set the severity of the rule and we'll add tags. Then we will set the minimum angle to uh, 15 degrees. For the second requirement, we'll add a monotonicity rule that will look for sequential z values within the line feature vertices. So again, to configure the rule, we'll start by adding um, a title, a description, uh, we'll set the rule severity, and we'll also add some tags. Finally, we'll make sure that the non-monotonic features radio button is checked. For the third requirement, we'll add a query attribute rule to flag any line features that have um, a null value in the feature code attribute field. So to configure this check, we'll um, again add a title, a description, uh, tags, and the rule severity. And then we will add an expression to find uh, no values within the feature code attributes field. Now that our rules are configured, we can save them. Notice how the rules change from green to gray after they have been successfully saved. Thanks, Caleb. Feature validation is controlled by the user and supports the evaluation of all features in the database or only those within a given map extent. In editing workflows, a data editor could validate change features after editing or when loading data from an outside source that may contain features with errors. In the next demonstration, Caleb will be assuming the role of a data editor who is responsible for creating and maintaining high quality data for their organization. Caleb? Thanks, Jay. In this demonstration, I will use the previously configured attribute validation rules to ensure newly created features conform to our business rules. As a data editor, I have finished sketching some hydrological line features and now need to ensure that no errors are present in my sketch. To do this, I will open the error inspector and ensure that the batch validation radio button within the evaluate rules dropdown is unchecked. Then I will click evaluate rules and wait for any reviewer errors to populate in the error inspector. As you can see, our three attribute rules flagged five errors within my sketches. We will turn on the phase and status column from the error inspector menu for added clarity. These error results can be easily identified by right-clicking the error row and selecting flash. In addition, a line errors feature class has been added to the map, which can be toggled on and off. To address our first issue, we'll right click the error row and select Zoom 2. This segment has violated our cutbacks rule as it contains an angle less than 15 degrees. To remedy this, I'll edit the segment vertices to correct the sharp angle. By navigating back to the error inspector and pressing the evaluate rules button, we can see that the phase and status column of our cutbacks error result have been updated to reflect our edits. Next, we will address errors returned by our monotonicity rule. This rule ensures that Z elevation values are sequentially incremental. My error features were flagged due to duplicate elevation vertices, in other words, non-sequential values. To fix this, I will use the Update Feature Z geoprocessing tool from the 3D Analyst toolbox. Once I've selected my error features, I will then set the tool's input feature to my Hydrographic Curves feature class. Then I'll use my Surface Elevation Raster as the input surface. For this demo, I'll be using the default interpolation method. After reevaluating the sketch against our attribute rules, 
we can see that the two monotonicity error features have updated their phase and status column to reflect my changes. Our final two error features were flagged due to null values being present in the feature code attribute. This will be remedied by editing the features attributes to populate the null value. After reevaluating my attribute rules against these edits, I can confirm that our business rules have been fulfilled. Thanks, Caleb. Before we go, here are some resources that you could use to learn more about these new capabilities. You can find information about Data Reviewer's automated validation capabilities by visiting the ArcGIS Pro site. In the Pro site, you'll find documentation on how to implement automated validation of your features using configurable checks. You'll also find a series of tutorials to help you get up and running quickly. If there are any additional questions or comments, please feel free to visit the team on GeoNet in the Data Reviewer place. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.